Hello folks, this week has of course been dominated by the announcements from the Warcraft Direct event, which unveiled details of the next major patch for the retail expansion, along with the 2025 roadmap and a tease of what's probably going to be the main back of the box feature for the next expansion, Midnight. Now, I'm pretty sure that everyone who's interested enough in World of Warcraft to watch my videos will have at least seen the big announcements. So while I will run through those, I'm going to go a little bit deeper and take a look at the roadmap itself. And there's actually quite a bit of detail hidden away in it. The devil, as always, is in those details. And while there's a fair number of surprises to be found there, it's not just what's included, but equally important is what's missing. So let's dive right in. The new roadmap actually starts during 2024 with the 1107 patch. And while the release date for the patch wasn't included in the event itself, this has now been separately confirmed as being on December the 17th. With the patch being in the PTR, most of what's in it we already knew, but there are a couple of extra details in the roadmap to go through. Data Mining had already found a bunch of new rewards for Wintervale, but it appears that we're getting an even bigger revamp. This description in the roadmap strongly suggests something on the scale of the very successful Love is in the Air revamp from earlier this year. If this event follows that same standard, I'm certainly more than up for it. The additional holiday updates also mentioned in the roadmap is likely to be the Lunar Festival and Love is in the Air event. The Lunar Festival is getting a new mount and a cool new transmog set, as is Love is in the Air. One thing that is very worthy of note is that the patch release date matches the start of Winter Vale in the US, which means that for other regions, the patch is actually launching one or two days after Winter Vale is currently due to start. What this probably means is that the start of Winter Vale will likely be delayed by a couple of days. I'll be sure to let you know once we find out more information on that front. One thing that isn't in the roadmap but was separately announced in the PTR this week is that the flying unlock for the Siren Isle is going to take the full six weeks, which is a bit longer than I'd personally expected and honestly is quite disappointing. With this being a minor patch with a likely eight week core lifespan, six weeks feels really late to me. Having just two weeks to enjoy flying before we move on to the next zone is pretty meh. Plunderstorm is also very interestingly its own thing on the roadmap. This isn't news of course, but it may be significant to something that turns up later on in the roadmap. Anyways, let's get on to the really new stuff. Patch 11.1 .1 is called Undermined with a D and takes us to a brand new underground zone of Undermine. This is an area that has been in the World of Warcraft lore ever since goblins have been a thing, as it's very much a big part of their original homeland. Those of you who have ever done the goblin starting area will probably remember the cool road network and the little cars we got to ride on, and the good news is that this is going to be a thing here, as part of a hot new feature which very much sounds like dynamic ground mounts. This was announced as having some customizable abilities, similar to the dragon riding tree, and appears to be very heavily based on a road or possibly racetrack network and undermine. In the announcement video, Ian did mention that this is a thing that's going to be reserved to the undermine zone and won't be available in the rest of the game. Now, this is very likely to be a similar deal to Dragon Riding, which was initially limited to the Dragon Isles, while the WoW team waited to see how we reacted to the new feature before they decided to expand it once it was clearly a success. What this means is that if it turns out we like this new system, it will probably spread. But if not, then yeah, it'll probably be something we'll end up leaving behind. In a PC Gamer interview, Quest designer Mark Kaleda revealed that the base speed will be four to five times current ground speed or similar to steady flight. One question I have is how or if this will impact flying. In the same interview, while that question is not directly addressed, he did say, so when people here know sky riding, I would say, yes, just wait till you get into this car. And well, I think you can read between the lines there. With patch 1107 also restricting flying, having two back-to-back -back patches with restricted flying does feel very counter to the direction we've seen the team move in in Dragonflight and with the launch of the War Within, and frankly reminds me of Mists and Pandaria, where all the post-expansion patches were no-fly zones, and, well, we all know where that led in Warlords of Draenor. I very much hope that I'm wrong about this, 
there's really no reason why dynamic driving and dynamic flying could not live side by side. If the team put enough effort into making the new feature, which is called DRIVE, interesting enough, then it can compete on its own merits. And in fact, in my view, competition could encourage the team to push themselves a bit further with this feature. Along with this, one nice surprise is the announcement of a new dungeon, Operation Floodgate. Now this appears to be a standard dungeon and not a mega dungeon and will be part of the next seasonal rotation along with the other four War Within dungeons and unsurprisingly Motherlode. Now that latter inclusion I do think is going to have a bit of an interesting reception from the Mythic Plus community. There's also a new 8 boss raid called Liberation of Undermine and a couple of new delves. But surprisingly, the news is that Bran is going to remain our companion into the next season. Back when Delves were announced, we had been led to believe that we'd be getting different companions every season, so this one is a bit unexpected. I personally don't hate Bran, but his voice lines are getting a bit wearing as the expansion goes on. So I'm honestly kind of disappointed not to get a bit of change in those. One last update on the roadmap is the Warband Camp Collections. One of the most requested features for Warbands was the ability to change the loading screen scenes. And my guess is that that's what this option refers to. The only other thing I could think of is that it could be multiple favourites. But no, I'm fairly certain that it's the customisable loading screens. My personal prediction is that we will probably see 11.1 .1 in mid-February. Eight weeks after the 17th of December is the 11th of February with the season probably kicking off a week after that. Moving beyond this and things do start to get a bit more vague, but there are still lots of interesting details hidden away in the roadmap. Patch 11.15 for example offers some new content called Nightfall. Now this is labelled in a very similar way to the Siren Isle, so does this mean we're getting another new mini zone in another minor pack? Well, your guess is as good as mine, but it does seem that we can expect something quite substantial in 11.15. Another bit of a surprise for this patch is the return of Horrific Visions, or at least something very similar to them. Horrific Visions was very much something that you either loved or hated when it was current. Personally for me, the experience of Visions was permanently tainted by them being the only way that you could upgrade the legendary cloak. The way that you had to hoard runs for future weeks or if you failed more than one or two visions you'd be permanently behind in the cloak put a lot of pressure on those runs and it was something that really put me off the whole concept. Another thing that I really didn't like about Horrific Visions was the way that we were forced to do the other open world content in 832 in order to collect the vessels that we needed to access the visions. This was the patch where I personally started to refer to the idea of forced content in World of Warcraft something that was ultimately carried on into Shadowlands. Ironically, Horrific Visions did actually get better later on in the patch when they introduced the vendor and effectively made vessels farmable. And I suspect that this latter version is what we will see here, or at least something similar. But for me, the damage of that terrible start to Horrific Visions had been done, and I just cannot remember them very fondly. Despite that, I am interested to see what the team will cook up here. Without that taint of feeling forced to do them and a new coat of paint, this may just be enough for me to at least give them a second chance. I'm expecting that this patch will likely drop in early April and it will include an update of Children's Week, which I'm quite interested to see what that will be because Children's Week for me is one of the best of the holiday events in World of Warcraft at the moment. With patch 11.17 and things are getting quite vague, beyond the announcement of another run of Turbulent Timeways, which honestly, given that we also have Turbulent Timeways in 11.07, and that is following on from the anniversary events back to back classic time walking and honestly time walking starting to feel a bit overdone. I'm expecting that we will see this patch in early June. Looking ahead to patch 11.2.0 and at first glance this very much seems like a standard major patch with a new rage, new open world stuff, a seasonal refresh of rewards, and an update to Brewfest. One thing we are going to be getting in 11.2.0 is yet another dungeon. 
Now this description does not suggest that it's going to be the usual mega dungeon that has been a feature of most expansions ever since Legion. Instead, it appears that we're only going to be getting two standard sized dungeons. The mention of a seasonal reward update is kind of interesting. While reward updates is part and parcel of a World of Warcraft season, they didn't specifically call them out for the 1110 section, so why put it here? This does make me wonder if we can expect some bigger changes to rewards, perhaps a bit of a revamp to the upgrade system, or maybe new legendaries. Regardless of what that actually means, I expect that we will see this patch release towards the end of July. Now, I would advise not reading too much into the relative placement of the midnight announcement beyond it likely being sometime midsummer. One major possibility could be an announcement at Gamescon, which will be August the 20th to 24th, but honestly, they could very easily move this to be around or even before the 11.2 release if it suits them. The final two entries are patches 11.25 and patches 11.27, which tells us there isn't going to be an 11.26, nor is there any mention of a season 4, albeit that would likely have been at the start of 2026. Overall though, the lack of a point 0.6 does for me support the idea that it is going to be an 80 month expansion, with season 3 being the last season. On the patches themselves, the details are understandably so vague as to tell us next to nothing other than that they will exist. I expect 11.25 to be mid to late September and 11.27 in mid November. Something that is very obviously missing from this roadmap is Pandaren and Drakthir Heritage Armor. In Dragonflight, Blizzard picked up the unfinished business from BFA of Heritage Armor, and I had been hoping that they would follow through and wrap up the rest in The War Within. Hopefully this has not been dropped on the floor and we can still expect to see it turn up at some point. Hello, it's Future Fury here. When I first recorded this video, I did a section about the mysterious icon at the end of the roadmap, which was variously speculated to be either Legion Remix or Player Housing. Late on Friday, Blizzard updated this icon in the roadmap to look like this instead, which I think you'll agree will make it a lot more obvious what it is. What is interesting is that this does not have the Midnight logo. So does this mean that we will be getting player housing sooner than midnight? Most MMO player housing systems have more than just houses. They often also have things like in rooms and apartments. So here's my theory. Well, full on player housing will not arrive until the midnight PTR. We are going to get a kind of a preview version of housing at the end of the war within, possibly as part of a pre-order bonus. That preview could be a customizable apartment room just to kick off the process of getting used to housing proper. This would have the advantage of allowing Blizzard to test their system out and iron out any issues before it goes live for real in the new expansion. Okay, let's get on to the biggest announcement. The Warcraft Direct event ended with a teaser trailer for player housing. Player housing is a much anticipated feature that certainly creates a bit of a three-way split in the player base. For those of us who, like me, have been hoping for something like this for a very long time, this is super exciting. Having somewhere for my character or characters to live feels kinda cozy, and a fully featured housing system offers a whole new dimension of personal customization and of course rewards. Now the trailer gives very little away about what the housing system in World of Warcraft could look like, but it did spend a lot of time lingering on sets of armor and trophies on the wall of the house. One of the most common asks from players for housing in WoW was the ability to display our trophies, so this does feel like it could be a very likely feature. Personally, I am hoping for a system that offers the flexibility of placement and customization that's offered by Final Fantasy XIV, but without the terrible housing shortage and awful acquisition system that that game has. For acquisition, I'd much prefer full instance houses, ideally either with options to choose the zone or the housing being placed in a way that feels evergreen, even if that means being in or around the major faction capitals. Now, I would not object too much if they start out with some limited housing choices, maybe just a couple of generic themed options for each faction, as long as they very clearly commit to delivering more. But I do hope they are also prepared for the player demand floodgates that they are opening up. 
The worst case scenario for me would be if they follow their age old patterns by putting the player housing only in the new expansion zones. While that was not the only issue with the garrison as a form of player housing, going back to a home in an area after the expansion has ended and starts to feel irrelevant would not be a great experience for the long term. The good news is that this seems fairly unlikely, as midnight is being set in Quel'Thalas, or in other words, in and around Silvermoon. The World of Warcraft team have a lot of learning opportunities from other games, but also from the WOD Garrison to help them avoid the major pitfalls, so I certainly will be keeping my fingers crossed that this turns out to be a bit of a success. One thing that is for sure is that I will be paying a lot of close attention to any developer interviews that are coming up to see what other hints about the feature set of player housing will turn out to be. Now, for the rest of the player base who are not fans of player housing, well, I think most players are in the, it's not for me, but I'm glad that housing fans are getting it category. I know that some do have concerns that this could make the world feel empty, with players often citing the impact of the WOD garrison in the other cities in World of Warcraft. My personal view is that the real issue with Warlords of Draenor was a chronic lack of open world content. Once you get around doing your reps, which could be done in a day or two, and you got the rewards that you wanted for five farming Apexis crystals, there really was nothing to do out in the open world, especially with the garrison being a one-stop profession hub. That of course is a very easy thing to fix. I very much doubt that there'll be a lot of utility in the new player housing, and as long as they invest in making the open world interesting by giving us reasons to visit it, then we'll be out there in it, just as we were for the Dragonflight open world event. Now, assuming that patch 1127 is the last patch of the world within, my personal guess is that we can expect to see Midnight's PTR along with player housing in early to mid January 2026, with the main patch being in mid to late February. One thing that is for sure is that the next year is going to be a very exciting time to be a World of Warcraft player, both in terms of the new content but in all of the discoveries that we can expect from the Midnight Alpha and Beta testing process. Ever since the BlizzCon announcement, I've personally felt that Midnight looked like it was going to be the most exciting expansion of the whole World Soul saga, and this has done nothing to change that opinion. But what about all of you? What are you wanting for player housing? Or do you even care? Or perhaps, maybe I've not been able to convince you that this is not going to turn out to be just another garrison. Let me know in the comments down below. One thing that I can say for sure is that I will be covering all the new developments and discoveries from both the War Within patches and the testing phases of Midnight over the next year. So do make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified whenever a new update goes live. As well as my new updates, I have a ton of guides, reviews and previews to come that you won't want to miss. And if you found this deep dive interesting or useful, then do make sure to let me know by hitting the like icon. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.